Today I'm doing patient uh, exams and uh, young Ellie has shown up. She's uh, 12 years old and uh, one thing I notice as I do my exam of the oropharynx is that Ellie has a bifid uvula and that's important for dentists to pick up. Uh, it could sometimes be a sign of a submucous cleft and the main thing uh, is that if a child has large adenoids um, this is one contraindication to removing the adenoids because if you do, you could create a, um, a fistula or an opening between the nose and the mouth. Okay, so let me show you that. I'll say, ah, uh, if I just move the tongue out of the way there, can everyone see that? So that's a bifid uvula, right? Now this young lady had her tonsils out, is that right? I think when you were younger, but the enos and throat doctor didn't take out the adenoids. One of the things you'll see is, is, a, is a narrow palate, okay? So my job as the orthodontist then is to widen the palate um, and that will help the nasal airflow. Uh, obviously here we're doing it to make room for the canines as well. The, the main thing is these children when they speak tend to have more of a nasal tone, right? Can you say banana? Banana. Yeah, say that again. Banana. Yeah. When you're looking at a child as a bifid uvula, you really should seek an enos and throat opinion. I think dentists are the number one people who pick this up. And uh, if you look at the x-ray here, you can see the class three jaw tendency, not because the mandible's too big, but the maxilla's not big enough. And that's related again to these factors. But look at the adenoids. Now normally you'd remove those because they're blocking the airway. But if you do, and you're gonna create uh, that problem and so that's why here we have other ways of working uh, around that so that we still leave the adenoidal pad and develop the upper arch to improve the breathing and, and the speech but these children tend to have a history more associated with uh, speech pathology so for the speech pathologists are listening uh, that's another thing to look for in the mouth the bifid uvula. I just want to show you normal versus abnormal so there's your hard palate and the soft palate and then there's a normal uvula right? Not bifid. Uh, these are tonsils, these are non-infected tonsils, but these tonsils are large. So the way we rate the tonsils, we divide the middle of the oropharynx and we do it into the quarters. And anything that crosses this midline really needs to be investigated by an enos and throat doctor. So in the tonsils rating, um, that would be known as grade three. Grade four will be the tonsils almost uh, touching each other. If you ever have a child that has a unilateral tonsil enlarged on one side, that's quite dangerous. That may be a sign of lymphoma and needs to be referred immediately. What else we're looking at here? We're looking at Malamparty index, the opening of the oropharynx, all the stuff that I've talked to you in different lectures. But right now, let's get back to this uh, uvula. You can see a, a bifid uvula. Now, why is that important? Well, the bifid uvula may not be causing any problems at all, but an enos and throat doctor should investigate to see whether there may be a submucous cleft. So here is a good summary of uh, what we look for uh, in the causes of a bifid um, uh, uvula. They could be genetic, environmental, or, or toxic factors. So smoking during uh, pregnancy, uh, diabetes, substance abuse, um, et cetera, et cetera if treatments are required. I think there's speech problems, there's swallowing difficulties. Um, uh, if there's no medical complications associated with the bifid uvula and it's an isolated condition, then it's fine. It's not as though we have to get something done. But I think as a dentist, if a child's not breathing properly, as a speech pathologist, if they have that sort of, um, like the young lady I showed you, rather than say banana, they're gonna say banana, right? So if you hear that, uh, that nasal tone, um, I think it's worth a further investigation from an enos and throat doctor. And, um, and what the enos and throat doctor will be doing, he'll be using um, a nasal endoscope uh, to see whether or not uh, there is a uh, submucous cleft um, palate. So certain words that you'll hear, certain syndromes, uh, one is VCF, um, De George's um, uh, syndrome, uh, and of course I can give you links if anyone is interested in following up more uh, on treatment uh, causes of a bifid uvula. I'm happy to send you all the information, uh, including the uh, treatment options. But I think just as general dentists, we need to be looking at more than the teeth. Uh, we need to become oral physicians. We start looking at um, the whole mouth. So thanks for your time. I hope it's been useful. Uh, my email is at the bottom. If you want further information on bifid uvula, please send me an email. We'd love to hear from you.